Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Mess. So today I got a fun and extra episode for you guys this evening because when I did the review for the Anne Bernick Arc D and Arc S, I asked whether or not you guys wanted to see a follow up on what I thought this was really great at. You guys overwhelmingly in the comments told me to do another one, so here we are. Because when I talked about this in the first place, I said it was a great physical design, some awesome controls and button layouts, but as far as being modeled after Sega Saturn, I found that it was not up to the task of emulating Saturn at a full frame rate. And I do still find that to be the case. There are some new operating systems being added to it. But honestly, what I have found is this is probably the best portable handheld for 2D arcade games, down to the Saturn controls. Something like Street Fighter Alpha 3 here, all the CPS2 games, CPS1 and 3, Neo Geo, all of that stuff is going to run absolutely outstanding on this handheld and getting those controls modeled after the Sega Saturn pad, long considered to be one of the greatest controllers ever made, I now understand what Ambernick was going for on this one. Now of course it does still look like a Sega Saturn and people are going to still try to get Saturn games running. Some of them will run relatively decently, but honestly even all the new operating systems and custom firmwares in the world are not going to make it run Saturn full speed with no frame skip. Versus something like Neo Geo here with Waku Waku 7, and give me a little bit of a break, it is hard to play through a viewfinder. The controls on this thing just make it one of the best way to play these games on the go and it is all down to this D-pad being modeled after the Sega Saturn. It feels extremely close to the original, and honestly, my Saturn pads are like 25 years old at this point in time, so it is hard to compare them because those have decades of use on them versus something like the Ambernic Arc D here, where it is brand new out of the box. Now, of course, we have the six button layout as well, and that's gonna be absolutely perfect for all of the Capcom fighting games, and it works pretty well for Neo Geo too. But the thing that I found about the Ambernic Arc D is this is just an absolutely spectacular way to play 2D arcade games, whether it's Neo Geo, Capcom C, CPS 1, 2, or 3, some of the Midway Williams boards, pretty much anything 2D in MAME. It has the processing power to run these at full speed with no frame skip whatsoever, which really isn't that surprising because these are not very high test systems to emulate whatsoever. But when you put on that incredible D-pad and the buttons, as well as all the shoulders that you can reconfigure, this becomes the best way, in my opinion, to actually play some of these games on the go. Because I've got an analog pocket, I've got a Steam Deck, I've got other emulation systems I can throw in my bag and take with me, but not a single one of them has controlled as well and as consistently than the Anbernic Arc D, and that's what I absolutely love. So let's take a look at this again right here. These six buttons in this arc, definitely the Sega Saturn pad design, but you're gonna notice as soon as I move this, it's also going to be the same design as pretty much any arcade stick. There's different curves depending on what you want your finger placement to be, but my home build here, my custom sticks made for me are the same layout as far as the Ambernick is concerned. D-pad versus arcade stick, but otherwise it's giving me that exact same vibe. And because this is based on the Sega Saturn controller, rolling those buttons makes it so much easier. This is a little bit of a washed out screen. I wanted you to see my thumb, but I can spam the same input over and over again. Not how you'd want to play a fighting game, but as an example of being able to repeat the same action over and over consistently, it's a very good example of what this handheld really does does excel at. And that's the thing, it doesn't need to run Sega Saturn at full speed to be a great option for you, and Ambernick never advertised this actually running the Sega Saturn, we just imparted that feeling on ourselves based upon the industrial design language and colorways they use to basically make it feel like a Saturn controller. But playing something like the Last Blade here on Final Burn Neo on the Ambernick, the performance is exactly what you need it to be, the inputs are repeatable, and rolling your thumb across that D-pad just feels like such a great experience because it feels like using a Saturn D-pad and that is the best thing in the world. I do think that that's the best controller ever designed as far as fighting games is concerned that isn't just an arcade stick in your hand. And that's all you want out of something like a fighting game, being able to repeat the same inputs over and over again and knowing that if you don't get your move out it's because you made a mistake and not because there's any lag in the controls or it was dropping inputs based upon the physical design of that D-pad. Now go ahead and listen to the audio here on Neo Geo as well. I'm giving you a little bit of an example of what it sounds like. I would say that you definitely need to turn the audio volume down a little bit, which I did in Resolve, because the Ambernic does seem to clip audio out of the mini HDMI jack, so just be aware of that. But I get a sense of the audio quality, I'll be right back with some more games to show you.
Sounds relatively accurate to real Neo Geo hardware, but I did have to reduce down the volume by 10 decibels, so if you notice that your Anabernic sounds like it's clipping channels, deal with the volume in the background. It just seems like maybe a software update or a custom firmware would fix that. But moving over to the Capcom side of things with Darkstalkers here, again, and this is another system, Capcom CPS2, which is going to be infinitely playable on the Anabernic Arc D or Arc S, no matter which platform you get, Linux or Android, you're going to have a good time. And again, this is just playing to the handheld strengths. It is all down to that control scheme and using that APU inside of it and its power to be able to play games that it can handle well. These are some of the most classic fighting games of all time. And in the footage, if you just see me doing the same thing over and over again, it's because I'm trying to see the repeatability of actual inputs. And for some reason, the AI here was being stupid and just kept ducking into the corner. And Darkstalkers, they love to do that on stage one. But again, a game that I played a ton, the moves are just coming out, and I will say something like the Steam Deck, while an excellent handheld, the D-pad on that is definitely going to be much inferior to the D-pad we have here over on the Arc D. I mean, obviously you can plug an arcade stick into the Steam Deck when it's docked and have an even better experience than even this, but as far as portable systems are concerned, especially on an arcade focus, I don't think there's anything on the market that's going to do as good of a job as the Anbernic handheld right here in that input. Everything worked exactly as I wanted it to, and I wasn't really dropping any inputs. I did notice some weird interlacing here on the capture of the emulation, and that is definitely down to the implementation, but this is not really an emulation review so much as it is an input and overall design review. And I know my Saturn controller is dirty. This has been in a box for 10 years. I got it used and I've never done anything with this particular one, but it was the one I grabbed for on camera. And as you roll your thumb across this, it has a certain feel, a certain movement to it. It's quintessentially feeling like a Sega Saturn controller with those six buttons in a line there. And you know how that works. Knock that off the screen and go over to the Arc D and it feels basically the same. Rolling that one piece of plastic allows you to hit all of those different cardinal directions and diagonals and everything works as it should. Even stuff like Mortal Kombat 2 are going to emulate perfectly great on the Anbernic. I do suck at Mortal Kombat so don't expect any high level play here, but I tried to kind of tour around different popular systems that would work in MAME or Final Burn Neo or otherwise to see how the emulation was and outside of a little bit of a weird interlacing thing on Darkstalkers, everything seemed to be working as I expected it to. And that's the thing, if the emulation is not good, it doesn't matter how good the D-pad is, you're not going to want to play the game. And of course, this is not an exhaustive list of every single 2D game in main Final Burnier or otherwise that's going to run on the core. These are just the top popular picks that I know everyone's going to pick up an Arc D and want to play. You're going to want to play Neo Geo, you're going to want to play Capcom CPS, you're going to want to play the Mortal Kombat. So I tried to hit the big things, but if for any reason you want a third part to this video, leave me a comment down below and tell me what you'd like to see tested. I went all the way through Capcom CPS 3 and I had good results the entire way. And because these are some of the best games of all time, you're going to have a good time as well. Just be aware that sometimes arcade games do like to use widescreen and something like Street Fighter 3 here, you can get widescreen mode out of the second game in the trilogy and it's not going to be the greatest experience on the Anbernic Arc D or Arc S, but in docked mode, it is going to be absolutely great. Just be aware of that. And I wanted to go to one of my favorite tests because I have seen emulation issues on this with aspect ratios in other handhelds before, and that is Warrior Blade Rostin Saga 3. This is one of my favorite beat-em-ups of all time, and it is such a deep cut. Basically, nobody seems to know it exists, but I figured while I had that mini HDMI cable into my capture card, I would check out Rostin Saga 3 to see if the aspect ratio was correct and see how the controls felt, because this is a very fast, very responsive beat-em-up, and I've played it so many times, if anything was off, I would absolutely know. And everything is working exactly as it should here. It's getting the aspect ratio correct as far as as the capture card is concerned, and all of the controls feel great. Obviously, this is not something that you would want to play in handheld based on that 4x3 screen not being very large. If you tried to play Warrior Blade 3 on the Anbernic handheld, you would have a very wide postage stamp. But that's the great thing about it. The mini HDMI out is spectacular. If there's any lag whatsoever, it was imperceivable to my capture card. I was able to play all of these games, do exactly what I expected them to do, and I didn't really have any issues whatsoever with lag. If I didn't get an input in, it's because I made a mistake. But this is actually what the Ambernic Arc D and Arc S are great at. Sure, it's shaped like a Sega Saturn controller, and sure, everyone wanted to play Sega Saturn on it. That just doesn't seem to be in the cards unless you like a slightly lower frame rate with a lot of frame skip. 
But as far as all of the arcade stuff in 2D, Neo Geo, all the CPS games, the Mortal Kombats, all of the different Konami beat-em-ups, all of those games from back in the day work perfectly on this handheld and for the fighting games having that Saturn D-pad and the six buttons on the face make everything so playable. This is what this handheld is for and for that reason and that reason alone it's now one of my favorite pieces of hardware because I can throw this in my bag, play some Neo Geo and it's amazing. For that I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.